Hello everybody, Moby is one here, bringing you another Star Wars Galaxies emulator episode. This one's going to be focused primarily on the new player tutorial that was added to Basilisk, in, well, a little bit after Publish 8 because they wanted to make sure things were stable before enabling it. But I believe it's enabled now, so we're going to check it out. In order to do so, I am recreating Fenadin. Some of you may remember Fenadin as the character that I kicked off this entire series with like over three years ago. Um, at some point, I don't know when it happened. I, looking back, I should have made a video about it because it would have been kind of funny. I had to delete Fenadin to make room for another character. And since then, uh, I have freed up a character slot. So why not bring him back? I don't remember exactly what he looked like, so this probably isn't exactly how he appeared. Yeah, I see he's pretty disappointed too. But uh, yeah, we're bringing him back. We're going to start off as a marksman, and this coon will actually help me uh, do a couple tutorial videos for the starting professions. That way we can get into some of the more interesting ones. So... We're going to start things off with a new player tutorial. Hopefully this name was not picked up by someone else. Fenadin star with two R's. New player tutorial. <sighs> this is the same shit that happened last time too. Alright, well it's working on Nova. So we'll just have to run through it on Nova, and then I'll have to later on find out if it works on Welcome Basilisk. Welcome to Star Wars Galaxies. Okay. Use the arrow keys to move, or hold down the right mouse button to move forward. You All right, can look so by moving your mouse, it's going to walk us through the, the basic controls first. Using mouse wheel, scroll forward to zoom into your character. Notice that if you zoom in all the way, you'll be in first-person mode. Scroll backwards to zoom out of your character and into third-person mode. You can also zoom your camera in and out by pressing the keypad plus and minus keys. Try zooming between first and third person. Yep. Pretty easy. Okay, I'm done. This is your chat window. There we go. Type here to speak to your fellow players. Go ahead and try it. Just type what you want to say and then press enter. Hi. This is your holocron. You can access it by pressing control H. Whenever you need information about something in Star Wars Galaxies, press control H to find it in your holocron. To close this screen, press control H again. Now, I knew the holocron was in the game, but I I never actually opened it up to see how detailed the descriptions were. Huh. I'm going to have to look into this to see how how detailed this is. All right, we'll we'll save that for later. Excellent. Come through the door and down the hallway there. And see what's neat is WASD, they actually, with the default keybinds, they don't move your character, they just type into chat. So right now, I am restricted to using either the arrow keys or... Come on, don't keep me waiting all day. Pushy. Uh, or the mouse. So we're just going to use the mouse for now. And I'm not going to move, move that... Move forward and click and hold your mouse on the Imperial Officer until the radial menu appears. I don't want to move that little UI box in the center of the screen until the game teaches me to do so, just because I want to see how long it would leave that there. Do you see now the you're option? in a conversation. Oh, whoops. You can choose one of the responses to the right with your mouse. I already broke it. I was supposed to click and hold. Remember, you don't speak to other players this way. Just type to talk to other players. When you are finished conversing with the Imperial officer, select the stop conversing option. To open the box, just click and hold open until you see me. the radial menu Great. appear. Now select the open option to access the contents of the container. You can take these items by clicking and holding until you get the radial menu Now option. choose the pickup option to move the item to your inventory. You've put the item in your inventory. 
I also just double click. Notice that your mouse mode changed when you opened that container. Here we go. You can toggle the mouse mode yourself with the Alt key. You can examine your inventory by pressing Control I. Scroll through your inventory until you locate one of the food items that you've just picked up. The Mirage Melon. Yeah. I found it. Okay, I'm not going to eat it. Converse with the Imperial Officer. Uh, Alright, so bank. They reimbursed us with a generous number of credits. So that explains where you get your starting credits from. And they tell you a little bit about you don't need cash on hand to buy things. So see if you actually if you do the tutorial and you actually read all the dialogue, they do tell you a lot of the important basics that that normally or previously the game didn't. This is an item dispenser. You can use it to buy basic it items in the game. In addition to the basic item dispensers, you'll find a number of terminals that will connect you to the Galactic Bazaar. Everything from large quantities of resources to specialized items can be bought and sold at the Bazaar Terminal. I guess that, that kind of looks a little bit into maybe what SOE intended the Bazaar Terminals to be. Maybe they intended them to have like basic things that you could purchase in addition to player Banks sold let items. You deposit and withdraw cash on hand. You can also use the bank to store items. You can only retrieve your items from the bank in which you stored the item. You can only store items in the bank you've joined. Although you can change banks at any time, you can only be a member of one bank at a time. You can spend credits from your bank account at most terminals. When you find hard credits, cash on hand, be sure to deposit them in your bank as soon as possible to avoid losing them. So you can't lose them anymore, but in an earlier version of Galaxies, you would lose any cash on hand Move after down you the die. Map towards the cloning and insurance terminals. Wow, this, this actually does go into a lot more detail than I remembered. Cloning. If something should happen to you, your clone will take over with all the skills you had at the time you died, though you always have the option to respawn at the nearest cloning facility. Unless you've cloned there, you will emerge with many, many wounds. You should clone yourself whenever you want the option to emerge from that particular location. Otherwise, you will appear at the closest cloning facility from where you died with many wounds. You will also need to set a new cloning location when you travel to a new planet because there is no interplanetary cloning. No, only when you want to have the option appearing at a particular location. All right, and insurance. Insurance is a way of better preserving your, the condition of your belongings in the event of your untimely demise. The, your turn of nominally uh, damaged insured items to a cloning facility fetches a much higher price with the facility at which you choose to clone. All right, gotcha. Your items will suffer a significantly increased decay rate when transported back to your clone. People like uh, like to be paid, and cloning facilities don't pay much for recovery of uninsured items. So it stands to reason that uninsured items tend not tend to not be cared for as well as their insured counterparts. Uh, and you do have to insure every time you die. Okay. Use the cloning terminal. You can do this through the radio menu, or you can just double click. The cursor changes Use the insurance open. terminal. Okay, all of our items have been insured. No, they haven't. <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> there would be a little eye next to them in the inventory. If you're going down that hallway, you might want advanced warning of what's down there. This is your radar. The red dots show potentially aggressive entities. Yellow dots indicate peaceful life signatures. You can also access an overlay map with Control M. Press Control M again to turn it off. You can zoom the overlay map using the mouse wheel while holding down the control key. Yeah, so basically everything in my first like two or three episodes is covered right here. Converse with the soldier. You can't go in there. He cut them to pieces. He's crazy. All right, just give me a gun. Oh, 
Oh, they gave me a bunch of guns. They gave me all the starting weapons that you get as a marksman. I wonder now if if I was starting as like an entertainer, if they would still give me these. But okay. The hallway is blocked by debris. Attack it to destroy it. Then proceed to the next room to face your enemy. So, if I didn't know any better, I would be using the radial menu to attack here. Because they didn't tell me anything about my ability bar or anything like that. In combat, you can spend your health, mind, or action pools to invoke special attacks. The attack option on the radial menu will be the default attack for hostile creatures. Bandit. Whoa, he's got a lot of health. Whoops, I forgot. Can't use W. Congratulations. Oh. The pirate what? has been destroyed. Now you can loot his corpse by clicking and holding your mouse on him until you get the radial menu option to loot. He just kills himself. I forgot. Radial option to loot. Hey, a new pistol. I'm not certified for it. Does he have credits on him? Yeah, see, you have to loot all to get the credits, though. That should be it, right? Seven of nine. I'd be even better with a little training. An Imperial officer has directed you to a skill trainer. Converse with the skill trainer to learn your first skill. Marksman trainer. Cool, so do you actually, if you do the tutorial then, you start off, oh, novice marksman. Okay, so this is where you get novice marksman. I wonder what would happen if I had put the money in my bank though. Right, because that, that 100 credits came out of my cash. You've picked up your first skill. There are many skills to master in your chosen profession. And there are advanced professions that only open up once you have mastered many skills. You can check your skills using the skills window. You can reach this with the skills button on the button bar or by pressing control S. Here's the skills window. You can also check your character status after your fight by pressing the character sheet button on the button bar or control C. Here's my character Proceed sheet. Proceed to the next room. Mission terminals like those to your left are located throughout the world. Whenever you want a quick adventure, you can always take a job from a mission terminal. Okay. You can also speak to NPCs and do tasks for them. There's one over there who has something for you to do. Uh, okay. Take these release documents to the quartermaster. Will do. Move to the next room to deliver your release documents to the quartermaster. If I use them, can't use them. Can I drop them? Can't drop them. That should be it. Then we choose our starting destination. Part 9 of 9, bye. Can I leave now? Yeah. That's it. Anything else to say, tutorial lady? Mm, what about you? Move along. Now, all right, out of curiosity, can I still do a step migration? If I want to max out my mind. Yeah, okay, so stat migrations still are applied immediately while in this room, and choosing a starting location is just like it is without doing the tutorial. There we go. 
We should be loading into Mon Sizely. Of course, we're on Nova. And that's it. That is the new player tutorial. I'll have to create Finadin over on Basilisk after an hour has passed. But unfortunately, I have to get ready to go to work right now. So that's not going to happen until later. But interesting. Very cool. I'm glad the uh, they got that working, the new player tutorial. That way, for people that happen into the emulator without finding you know my channel or whatever... At least I know there's something in the game to get people familiar with the basics. And I think it did a pretty good job of explaining all the basics. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you think that that tutorial is comprehensive enough. Or if you still think that Galaxy's learning curve is just too steep to not have to go to Google and search for stuff yourself. Or, or use the forums or whatever. But uh, I, think, I think it did a pretty good job. There's definitely a lot more to the game, but I think with that information, just about anybody should be able to know what to do once they land at their starting location. So, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Mobius1 here, and Fenadin, and I'll see you next time.